Welcome back to Good Morning Football. It's time for Believe, believe It or Not. Yeah! Yeah! Let's go! You guys have your Microsoft Surfaces. You uh -huh. say yes or no to a statement that I read based on a headline that you need to know before you go to work this morning. It was a site that no Panthers fan wanted to see last Thursday. Cam Newton limping mm. off to the sidelines. He did not return to game action. And yesterday, Ron Rivera shed some light on Newton's latest injury. Yeah, he threw again. Um, he got out, got a nice little workout in with RV on the side, um, and then uh, was out for the rest of practice. So he's, he's he's made good strides, and we're pretty excited about it, you know, because we'll have a couple extra days to practice and get ready for uh, for the Rams as well. So. Um, good. Any doubt in your mind he could be ready for it? No, there's no doubt in my mind. I mean, he's, he's, everything he's, he's been doing, everything he's done, he did exactly what he needed to. Um, and, and, and we're at the point now where, you know, it's just a matter of time before, you know, once we start our, our, our prep, our actual prep for the Rams, uh, that he's back on the field. Okay, Coach, I like that. No doubt in his mind, Rivera echoing plenty of confidence that he will have the services of the former MVP come week one. Believe it or not, Cam Newton's best football mm. is still ahead of him. Um, all right. Tough question. Yeah, great football, sure. Best football, no. I I'm going to be honest here. Like, Cam Newton maybe will go and win three Super Bowls. Maybe he will. But I can't sit here and tell you he's going to play better than he did in the 2015 season. It was one of the greatest quarterback seasons I've ever seen. He's 30, and you say, well, we got guys 36, 37, 42 still playing great football. Cam's not those guys. In that season, he's running quarterback power up the middle. He's diving. That's the deal. Cam's thing is he's going to have to say, like, in MMA, like, he went away from the stand-up and worked on his ground game. Chuck Liddell could have had a longer career if he had a better ground game. Cam needs to evolve his game a lot, and I think he has good football. But, guys... 2015 season was insane. I don't think it'll be as good as that. Okay, you're talking about evolve and evolution. Yes. Nate, I'm going to speak on uh, Newton's law. All right, what's Newton's law? It's that uh, an object will remain in rest, right, unless it's compelled to change by an external force. You know what that external force is? Everybody doubting Cam Newton. Okay. So, yes, I feel like he is compelled all of a sudden to prove to everybody that my body isn't falling apart, that all these young quarterbacks that you're praising, the Lamar Jacksons, the Baker Mayfields, oh, what they do, I did in one season. Yeah, I was fast like Lamar Jackson. I can throw like Baker Mayfield. You haven't seen me healthy in a long time because I was carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. So I do feel like because of Newton and Newton's law that Cam Newton's going to come back stronger than ever. Mm, got me motivated, Nate. Uh, I'm going to say yes, too. A little different reason huh. why you do, Nate. I'm going to say yes because I feel like Cam Newton's career will be complete when he hoists that Lombardi trophy. So it's his best football yet. Now, Kyle, no one's ever going to put up, including Cam Newton, a statistical season like he did, and they went 15-1 and one and stormed right through the Arizona Cardinals and went right through. That was all great, but it ended in despair when he didn't go for that fumble or Von Miller mm -hmm. and Malik Jackson sacking him mm -hmm. in that Super Bowl. So I'm going to say from a team standpoint, yes, there's better football ahead of him. This team is younger. It's McCaffrey. It is DJ Moore. It is Curtis Samuel. They have loaded up on defense. Gerald McCoy is a great one-year addition. I think the Carolina Panthers are Super Bowl contenders not only this year, but for the next few years because mm. of all the youth on this team. So I'm going to say yes, the Panthers could be a better team than they were even that season, Ooh. which means a better season and better yet to come for Mr. Cam Newton. Best playmakers around Cam Newton since Steve Smith was in town. Talk to me about the cat pack, Shrey. Talk to me That's about the cat it. pack. And Steve Smith was a great player, but his best days were before mm -hmm. Cam Newton got there. Cam yeah. Newton has been with the Kelvin Panthers, Benjamin, yeah. and he's been with other big, tall receivers like Devin Funches. Cat Pack, if you're not aware, is Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, and Curtis Samuel, and these three are about to tear up the league. That is what he's got going. I think they're excited about it. I'll so Peter changed the question, players. and Nate thinks if you doubt someone, they turn into Captain Marvel. Is that basically <laughs> what we're doing here? Basically, okay. yeah. You think we're, we're just overblowing it? <laughs> well, I mean, right? yesterday Nate said everyone's 15. doubting Joe Flacco, so now he's going to be Joe Montana. Like, Nate, I'm not doubting him. I'm just seeing what I see. I'm an overly optimistic guy. And we love that. <laughs> Drama dominating the offseason. We've had plenty. And Antonio Brown's pretty much at the center of it. He and his messy divorce with the Steelers. The brilliant Michelle Tafoya of NBC recently asked Ben Roethlisberger about publicly calling out Brown last year after that loss to Denver, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, I, I, I wish I would have done it. Um, Why? You know, oh, because obviously we saw what happened, and obviously it ruined a friendship. They just got caught up in the emotion, the heat of the battle. But uh, the other person I, I challenged that game was James Washington, and I know people made a big deal about that. But James Washington texted me, called me, and talked to me in person and thanking me for that. And so the outside world was killing me for it. He thanked me, and that's all that really mattered. Why do you think A.B. was not able to handle it the same way? You have to ask him. I'm not sure. 
AB has been making a lot of news. What's your hope for him for this season? That he has a good, healthy season. In a since deleted tweet, Brown did fire back over the weekend saying, never friends, just had to get my ends. Shut up already. It was actually yesterday. He deletes it. It's gone. We can't even show it uh, because we didn't get a screenshot of it. But it seems like the back and forth between Brown and his former teammates is still raging on. So, Nate, believe it or not, the Antonio Brown Ben Roethlisberger drama is over. <laughs> oh, nah, fam. I thought it was over. I mean, we kept talking about how they need to detach themselves from each other and how exes need to stop talking about each other. But every week we wake up and these guys are answering questions about one another. Listen, I can care less whose fault it was. I can care less if it's Big Ben's passive, aggressive nature caused permanent damage in the relationship or if it was Antonio Brown being a diva. They're now on separate teams. Wearing different jerseys, just move on without each other. We're all good with you guys not talking about one another. Hey, I'm gonna take you behind the curtain a little bit. You do those sit downs for one of the pregame shows, and Michelle Tafoya is one of the best at them. They tell you, the PR guys will sometimes tell you, hey, maybe don't ask this, maybe don't ask that. I'm assuming that the Steelers PR staff said, hey, if you could do it, let's let's not let's talk about the team this year, not last yeah. year. Tafoya comes right out of the gates. <laughs> okay, Antonio Brown. And as long as Ben is going to do interviews and as long as Ben is going to be on the field, until we play football, this is what you're going to get. So if that was a sneak peek at what we're getting for the opener against the Patriots, please, more, more, more. <laughs> I am all for it. Tafoya, kudos to you. And Ben, sorry, you don't dictate how a journalist gets to ask the questions. And in this case, Michelle Tafoya was going for it. That's good. I'll put up the no quickly. Just I look at that clip of Roethlisberger, you know what I think? I just hmm. think... Pray for Derek Carr. Pray for Derek Carr. This is going to be a long, long ride. And what, what did I say? I think it was last Friday on mm -hmm. the show. I think I said, how many days do you think it's going to be on our show where we're talking about Antonio Brown for a brand new topic that has nothing to do with the Oakland Raiders? Guys, stop the clock. It's been five days. And I will pose it again. We leave for Chicago one week for today. Between now and then, are we having another Antonio Brown conversation about a whole new topic that has nothing to do with the 2019 Raiders? I say absolutely take the clip. We probably will, but that's Antonio Brown's own doing. I feel like if Ben Roethlisberger, after a great game where James Washington, your guy, has a tremendous uh, you know, productive game or Juju catches a game-winning touchdown. Even if he's just out there speaking nicely about those wide receivers, anything he says that is from the heart and about those guys is going to get misconstrued as some sort of subtweet situation towards Antonio Brown. Le'Veon That's, Bell was very positive towards James Connor. Him. I haven't heard Antonio Brown praising Juju or James Watt. I don't mm. see that coming, Ken. No, he disrespected Juju. He doesn't like Twitter. those guys. Yeah. No, Big Ben being asked about his teammates. Sure, I'm saying I think that to Antonio Brown the whole Brown is he can't resist. Yeah. yeah. At GMFB with your tweets. <laughs> people aren't made for the Twitter era, right? Yeah. It, the time was, Ben would say this, and Antonio would have to wait to go sit down with Ray Ratto and get his pad out and do a long form thing. It would take a week, instantaneous, and then he deleted it, which is also a little bush. Um, I bet Rich <laughs> yeah, if you're going to put it out there, let me just say this. Okay. Many say thoughts. This. I bet. If you're going to put it out there, oh, what do you mean? Hey, leave it out there, fam. You know what I'm saying? You got a tweet? Let that tweet ride out. Rich Eisen. Hey. Make the show, and the Network Royalty right. joining our show for America's favorite segment, Whiteboard Wednesday. He's never done a Whiteboard Wednesday. Huh? Is that true? Oh, well, so. I don't think so either. And we see inside the Antonio Brown helmet drama as it plays out. Well, Hard Knocks review. Hard Knocks has been a great this year. Great this year.